Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Noah and today I'm going to be creating another tier list for you guys. This one is going to be the best and worst wonders in Civilization 5. And the reason I'm doing a tier list for a game that's over a decade old is because I recently got back into Civ 5 and I've been enjoying it a lot. Um, you know, Civ 6 life cycle is pretty much over at this point. And while I do think that Civ 6 is a better game than 5, I enjoy it slightly more, um, which is reasons for a whole different video, but anyway, I'm going to rank the World Wonders in Civ 5 today, and my criteria for this is going to be basically, um, like if you're starting a random game with a random Civ, with all the random settings, and you click enter, how, you know, how useful will these wonders be to you over all of your games, you know, that you play, because obviously there are some wonders, like the culture wonders, or the religious wonders that, depending on the game you're playing, can be S tier, can be F tier. But, you know, that wouldn't make her a very interesting tier list, so... I'm just gonna try to make this as balanced out as possible, so over the course of all your games in Civ 5, how useful will these wonders be to you? That's kinda how I'm gonna try to go about this. So, let's get started. So, first up, we have Alhambra. We're going in alphabetical order here. And I will try to have the info uh, of the wonder and what it gives on screen as I'm talking about it. So we start with Alhambra, and Alhambra's going in A tier for me. Uh, what makes this wonder really good, in my opinion, is the free promotion, the free drill one promotion to each unit uh, trained in the city, which can be really strong when changed, chained with other um, other buildings or wonders that give XP to units. Because even if you're on the if you're on the offensive in a game, you can get units with super high promotion levels, and if you're on the defensive, you can still get super high promotion levels on your units. So, Alhambra is a pretty solid wonder in all almost all situations. So I have it in A tier, and the culture bonus, of course, is nice as well. Moving on to Angkor Wat, which is going to go into D tier. Angkor Wat, I mean, it gives you 25% cheaper tiles for both uh, gold and culture, which is not really that good, in my opinion. Um, at the point of the game where it comes in, it really just does not do enough, because by the time you're getting to education, you probably have a lot of the tiles you already need or want. So I just don't think this is a very useful wonder. Uh, I would not recommend building it unless you really have nothing else to do, because once again, at the time, by the time it's unlocked and by the time you complete it, you're probably going to have all the tiles in your cities that you really want. So, that's why I have Angkor Wat in D tier. Next we have Big Ben, which is going to go into C tier. Our first policy locked wonder. You have to get commerce to get Big Ben. I mean, it's okay. Uh, cheaper purchasing of things in cities is okay. Um, but 15% isn't anything like super significant, like say 25% would be. Uh, I just don't think that this wonder is really worth going into commerce for unless you're gonna finish the commerce tree so you know the, the gold is nice the cheaper purchasing is nice but other than that I just don't really see Big Ben being this really good wonder or anything so I have to have it in C tier just an average wonder in my opinion moving on to our next one which is Bora Bador also gonna go into C tier um, but this one I think is slightly better than Big Ben, but basically you get like 600 or 700 free faith with the three free missionaries, which can be a really big jump start to spreading your religion. The problem is it's just three missionaries, and they're going to be gone, you know, in the next hundred, maybe not hundred, probably about the next 50 turns or so. So while it's nice to get that jump start in spreading your religion, I don't know if it's really worth building Bora Bador for. So that's why I would say that Bora Bador is just going to be a C tier wonder. It's pretty average. Religious game, you might want to build it if no one else is. But, you know, it's just an average wonder. Next, we have Brandenburg Gate, which is also going to go into D tier. And what kind of drags down Brandenburg Gate is that it's comes, it comes a little late into the game at military science. Uh, the free grade general is nice, but if you're building this wonder, you probably already have. Uh, several great generals and you're getting a lot of great general points the experience is nice 
because you can put it towards whatever promotion that you want. Uh, the two great scientist points are nice. If you're going for a science victory, you might even consider this. But, you know, I just don't think it's as good as a, an, as an Alhambra, which gives you the plus 20% culture and a free castle and a free specific promotion. That's why, I, you know, I, unless you're on the offensive, I don't really think you should be building Brandenburg Gate in your game. And we're going to have another addition to the D tier here with Broadway. And the reason Broadway's in D tier is... Musicians are the latest of the culture great people coming to the game. So while you do get a free great musician and three slots for it and a little bit of culture, I don't know, it's just a great musician. You know, you can't send it to another sieve to get culture for your, for your sieve, but I think it's just a little too late into the game to make a big impact for culture, culture victories. Like, this is a culture-only wonder, for sure. That's why it has to go low, because if you're not going for culture, there's no reason to build this wonder. And other than that, like, you know, great musicians, like I said, they come too late into the game to make too big of an impact. So that's why I have to put it in D tier. And moving on here to Shishanitsa, which is another A tier wonder joining Alhambra here. And I didn't think that this wonder was that great until a little bit ago. Um, but the plus four happiness, you know, that's, that's solid. The length of Golden Ages increased by 50%, so basically your Golden Ages, instead of being 10 turns, are now 15 turns. is more significant than it seems, because that's just another 5 turns of plus 20% uh, production and plus 20% culture, and extra gold on all the tiles. So Shishnan, it's a, it might be a little overlooked if you haven't played the game a lot, but increasing those Golden Ages can be really, really helpful to, you know, just continuing the snowball for your empire. That's why I have an A tier. Uh, moving on to the CN Tower, which is an F tier wonder. And the reason why this is an F tier wonder, even though on paper it sounds good, is because, just like Broadway, it comes way too late into the game to do anything. Okay, free broadcast tower. That's nice, but if you're at that point, you probably have all the social policies that you really want. You know, plus one population and plus one happiness each city okay but you probably already have a lot of population and a lot of happiness at this point so you know the CN Tower wall it seems like it would be a good a good wonder to build especially for culture I just do not think this is worth building at all you're better off making units or you know researching science instead of building the CN Tower in my opinion moving on to the Colossus of Rhodes and I have the Colossus in B tier and that is because Trade routes are really strong in this game, in Civ 5. Especially trade routes to other civs or city-states, you can get a significant amount of gold per trade route. And so getting a free trade route and getting a little bit extra gold for trade routes can be really helpful, you know, jump-starting your economy pretty early because this does come in iron working. So if you do have like a capital coastal city or a high production coastal city, if that's possible, I would recommend building the Colossus because of the ability to get to kind of jumpstart your economy with those with those with that extra trade route. So that's why I have Colossus in B tier. Next, the Cristo Redentor is another B tier wonder. This one is just a flat 10% bonus. There's some new social policies, and that's just generally good. You know, you want more social policies. Uh, there's nothing wrong with more social policies. The only like downgrade to this wonder is, again, that it's later into the game, so you have a lot of the social policies you need, but you can use Cristo Redentor to get a lot of the um, bonuses for your ideology. You know, if you're going to get to those tier, tier 3 benefits for your ideology, you can get them a little bit faster by building this wonder. So, you know, Cristo Redentor is a solid wonder. If you can build it, I'd recommend it, because it can help in any victory type. Next, we have the Eiffel Tower, which is going to slide into C tier. Um, this is another culture-only wonder, pretty much. You know, the plus 12 tourism can be really helpful. Plus 5 happiness, also helpful. But, you know, it's the tourism is the main bonus here. So if you're a cultural victory, if you're going for a cultural victory, you want to be building this wonder. But other than that, I don't think it's really worth it. But even because of the happiness wonder, or the happiness benefits, I have to put it in C tier because like Broadway is a purely cultural wonder, whereas the Eiffel Tower can give you some um, 
some benefits outside of the culture. So that's what I have in C tier. Moving on, next we have the Forbidden Palace, which I have in B tier. And this is another culture or policy locked wonder. You have to have patronage, which is the city-state uh, policy tree. So not many people are going to be opening it. But if you do, it gets you, you know, two delegates in the World Congress, which can be significant pretty early on when people don't have a lot of delegates. And the minus 10% unhappiness in your cities is a really good benefit that will help you for the rest of the game. So if you do need to unlock uh, patronage, whether you're going for a city or a diplomatic victory, or you want to just get more bonuses from your city states, then I think the Forbidden Palace is really worth building. Um, I don't know if I'd open patronage. Well, you could open patronage just to get this wonder and for the opener bonus, which is uh, city states resting point, I believe, is higher. So, you know, you could do that. So that's what I have in B tier. Solid wonder. Recommend if you open patronage. Next, the Globe Theater. And this is a C tier wonder for me. I think it's a little better than Broadway because great writers, again, come earlier. Um, you can theme this wonder pretty early to get some extra extra tourism. And anytime you can get a free great person, it's usually okay, depending on if it cr increases the amount of uh, points that the next great person costs. But I have it above Broadway because it's a little more helpful. And you could build this in other victory type games as well if you want to deny people a uh, free good writer or cultural victory. So that's why I have the Globe Theater in C tier. And our next F tier wonder is next, and that is the Great Firewall. I mean, I think this is more like a meme tier wonder. Like, I don't know. 99.9% .9 spy rate in the city? Okay, but how often do you get spied on? that late into games. Um, it just doesn't really come along that often. And while it does negate tourism bonus of other cities' internet technology, okay, that's solid. The problem is internet is like one of the last technologies in the game, so you should have won the game by the time other people unlock the internet. So that's why I think the Great Firewall is more of a meme wonder than an actual beneficial wonder. It's just too late and not strong enough to be making that big of an impact. Next, Great Library, which is a very good wonder that I have an A tier. A free technology that early into the game I think is more helpful than you might realize because you can start unlocking whatever side of the tree you're not going into yet. Say that you're going on the top to rush universities and, and education and you're ignoring the bottom of the tree, you can use that free tech to unlock a crucial bottom, excuse me, bottom of the tech tree. Uh, tech to get you more more open and more balanced there in the tech tree or you can just use it to if you're rushing ahead to get a more expensive tech uh, and then uh, the great scientist point that early is also very strong because you can start snowballing and get a really early great scientist because of how early uh, you get the great library so AT wonder the great library next we have the great lighthouse which is gonna slide into D tier like, this is only useful on an archipelago map, really. Like, plus one movement in sight. Okay, that's not, that's not bad. Free lighthouse. Okay, free building. Free building. Great merchant point. Not so good, because every great merchant you get increases the cost of the great engineers and scientists, which are the ones you want to be getting. So, just a great lighthouse I don't think is worth building unless you're on a heavily naval map or you're a heavily naval, naval sieve. And that's why, you know, I just have to have it in D tier. It's not that strong. Next, the Great Mosque of Dijen is a B tier wonder. And I'm a little bit surprised about this until I did my research um, and you know did a little testing. You have to unlock piety to get this, which is not an underrated tree in my opinion. Uh, you can get a lot of really good faith bonuses on the piety tree, but all your missionaries can spread three times instead of two. That can really jumpstart your religion and get it spreading a lot faster. And also, it applies to great prophets, even though it doesn't say it. It will give your great profits one extra charge as well. And gives you a free mosque, even though you might not be able to even have mosques with your uh, building ability. So the great mosque, um, if you're going to open piety, you pretty much better build this wonder. Because it will give you just the ability to spread your religion farther and faster for the rest of the game. Next up we have the great wall 
which is going to go into C tier. Uh, this wonder, I mean, it looks cool <laughs> when it's on your borders, but it can make your opponent's life really difficult trying to move inside your borders if you're defending yourself in a battle or a war. You know, plus one extra movement required is really, <laughs> really uh, hampering to enemies trying to get inside your borders. And free walls in the city, that's fine. Um, and the key thing here is that this becomes obsolete when you discover dynamite, not when other people discover dynamite. So you can put off dynamite if you really need uh, the Grey Wall's benefits longer. So, Grey Wall, you know, kind of average wonder if you go on the bottom of the tech tree to engineering and you feel like you need to defend yourself. You got like Montezuma nearby or uh, Alexander nearby. This can be a wonder uh, that can help you defend yourself a little bit better. Next up, Hagia Sophia, D tier wonder. Free temple and a free great prophet. That's it. Um, is there that really worth building a wonder for? I don't think so. A free great prophet? You can't really say no to a free great prophet, but when it comes with the cost of building a wonder at Theology, when you could be building the Great Mosque or Bora Bador, uh, you know, I think that you'd be better off building those two wonders than Hagia Sophia because of the. Uh, the, uh, the benefits of the other wonders, I think, are stronger, and they'll help you more over the course of the game than Hagia Sophia. Moving on to the Hanging Gardens, which is going to be our first S-tier wonder. And I have this in S-tier because the ability to jumpstart your growth in your capital this early, and also, of course, this requires tradition. You have to have tradition to get this. And the ability to jump here, jumpstart your capital that well with plus six food is kind of crazy. It can snowball into your capital to be gigantic and produce a ton of science. And getting a uh, free garden, and it doesn't even matter if the city is on a river or a lake. So getting plus 25% great people, really good bonus. But the ability to just snowball your growth and food and science in your capital city with hanging gardens makes it so that if you get tradition, you better be building hanging gardens because it's that strong. So that's why it is our first S tier wonder. And we will move on to Himeji Castle, which is going to be a D tier wonder. This is like a defensive wonder. Um, you know, it's kind of like the Great Wall, but worse. Whereas the Great Wall makes the AI have to build, or not build, uh, move through your territory a lot worse than they usually would. Himeji Castle just gives you a flat plus 15% combat strength when the unit starts in your territory okay is that really worth building a whole wonder for and it's like gunpowder so it's kind of out of the way at the bottom of the tech tree if you're playing peacefully you're probably at the top of the tech tree i just don't really think that it's worth getting plus 50 percent just for that so Medji castle d tier unless you really need to defend yourself i don't recommend building this wonder next we have the hubble space telescope another s tier wonder two free great scientists which, first of all, insane. Second of all, free spaceship factory, also super nice. And plus 25% production in the city when building parts. Like, are we serious? This is the science wonder, and if you can get it at the end of the game, it pretty much guarantees you're going to get a science victory. So even though it's kind of useless for non-science victory uh, games, it's so strong that it has to be an S tier, because no other wonder can virtually guarantee you a win like the Hubble Space Telescope can for any other victory type. Next we have the Kremlin and this is going to go into C tier. This wonder requires you to get order uh, ideology and you know it's mostly here because of the free social policy. Uh, any free policy you can get is going to be solid but you know who's going to really be building tanks with the plus 50 percent tank bonus if you have order you're probably going for science victory instead because you know that you take autocracy if you're going for uh, a domination victory so you know that's it's really only in C tier creative because of the free policy that's about it so moving on to the leaning tower of Pisa A tier wonder anytime you can increase great people generation it's gonna be really strong and a free great person that you get to pick also really strong I mean that's all it really needs to be said about the Leaning Tower. Great people can change the course of your games depending on who, how, how you get them. So next wonder, the Louvre. 
is a D tier wonder. Uh, this one acquires exploration, and it's another culture only wonder. It's very similar to Broadway, except this one's for art instead. You should not be building this wonder if you're not if you are not going for culture. If you are going for culture, you might not even not you might not even want to pick up exploration because it's a little bit out of the way. And in order to see hidden antiquity sites, you have to go and completely fill exploration, which might be too much of a sink. So, you know, I feel like this this wonder is only like for culture victory and you have nothing else to build. You might, you might as well build this. And if you have cultural policies to spare. Next, Machu Picchu is going to slide into B tier. This one is another one where it helps your economy in the early game because you know about the time where you get this you're gonna be starting to build roads and form those city connections to get the extra gold um, but of course you are hampered by the you have to have uh, be next to a mountain when this happens uh, but then also the great merchant point is a little bit it hurts a little bit because it starts that great merchant countdown that it increases the price of all your other great people, or great engineers and scientists that is, so Machu Picchu, B tier wonder because it helps you with gold. Next, the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus is sliding into C tier. Uh, this one you should only pretty much build if you have marble or stone near your capital, otherwise you know, 100 gold every time you get a great person, that's okay. It's really good in the early game when you hardly have any gold, but by the time you're like activating people way longer in the game, 100 gold is not really that much for you. So that's why I don't have um, I don't have the mausoleum very high because I just don't think that it's that strong uh, throughout the entire game. It's good in the early game, but it's not that strong throughout the entire game. Next, Nuschwenstein. This is a B tier wonder. The AI like never builds this wonder, so you can probably get this in any game. As long as you're willing to build castles in all your cities to get the bonuses of the happiness, culture, and gold per castle. So, you know, you might as well, I guess. This is one of those, like, you might as well wonders. You'll pick it up a railroad. You probably got some time to put some castles in your, in your cities. You might as well just build this wonder because the AI is not going to. Next, we have another S-tier wonder, and that's Notre Dame. Flat, plus 10 happiness, plus 4, plus four faith. Like, plus 10 happiness at that point in the game, really, really good. Plus 4 faith, it's solid. You know, it's not anything crazy. The only problem is, is the AI loves this wonder, and it's at the physics technology, which is not really that really good of a technology. But if you can somehow get there and build this wonder, your empire's going to be in really good shape. If you're playing tall, this will just start to chain those golden ages together. If you're playing wide, this will allow you to have more golden ages. So Notre Dame, overall, very solid wonder. And has to be an S tier because it can help you in pretty much any game in any situation. Next up, the Oracle is going to slide into A tier. Free social policy, some culture, and a great scientist point. But so early into the game of philosophy, it can help you get closer to finishing off, whether it's liberty or tradition and allow you to start your second policy tree. You know, it's just, again, free social policies. Anytime you can get those, it's going to be a good wonder. So that's why I have the Oracle in A tier. Next up, the Parthenon. This is a C tier wonder. Like, a, a great work as early as drama and poetry. Especially a work of art, because you can't even really get artists yet. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But... It's kind of useless in every other situation. So that's why it has to go in C tier. It's kind of like the Globe Theater in that. Pretty much culture only wonder. But it's early enough into the game where if you can get it, it's not a bad idea to get it. Next up, we got the Pentagon. And unfortunately, we have another F tier wonder here. Like upgrading military units that late into the game, all the way at combined arms and later, you're going to have enough gold to upgrade your units, well, more than likely. Like, it's not going to be that difficult to find the gold to get those units. And another, two more great merchant points is just kind of another icing on the cake of this being an F tier wonder. Just don't, unless you have absolutely nothing else to do, 
do not build this wonder. It's not worth it. Next, Petra. A fan favorite, and it has to go to A tier, because the ability for Petra to turn any desert city into a really good city is super strong. Like, if there's a, if there, you have a city with enough tiles that can take advantage of Petra, it's like legally required. You have to try and build Petra. You have to try at least. Because it can turn a city with terrible tiles into a city with pretty darn good tiles. And don't underestimate the free trade route as well. Uh, especially at er as early as it comes at currency. So please do not... Whenever you have a chance to build Petra, it's like kind of a sieve thing. You kind of have to build it. Next up, the Porcelain Tower is going to slide also into A tier. This one you have to get Rationalism, which is arguably the best policy tree in the game because science is the best yield. Uh, free grade scientists, you never say no to, no to those. And the ability to get more from research agreements, the AI will usually offer you research agreements if you're friends. So, you know, this is a science wonder, and since science is the best yield in the game, it has to be an A tier wonder because of that. Um, you know, of the, the cultural wonders and the faith wonders, they're all good and all. But with how strong science is, it's pretty much, you know, that's what makes this wonder so good. Next is Perora, which also slides into A tier. Uh, this one you have to have autocracy for, the ideology. Um, but it gives you a happiness for every two policies you have. And by the time you get this wonder, you probably have a decent amount of policies. So you should not have to worry about... Um, worry about happiness for the rest of the game if you get this wonder. And you're going to be fighting a lot. If you have autocracy, you're probably going for a domination victory. So you're going to be battling happiness. And that means that getting this wonder will be able to you know, kind of stop the, the train of unhappiness and get your empire back on the right track. So even though it's pretty much a domination only wonder, it's so good for domination, it has to go in S tier. Excuse me, has to go into A tier. I'm sorry, because the next tier, or the next wonder, is an S tier wonder, and that's the pyramids. Always a really good wonder in Civ. And anytime you can speed up worker construction, really good. Anytime you can get free workers, also really good. Anytime you can get a great engineer point that early, also really good. Everything this wonder provides will benefit you for the entire rest of the game. And that's why it has to be an S tier wonder, because any any Civ and any victory type can benefit from the pyramids. Next up we have Red Fort. This is pretty much just like Kameji Castle. Just makes defensive buildings more effective. Okay. Um, only if you're getting invaded should you be building this wonder more than likely. Other than that, it's really not anything special. So just like Kameji Castle and Red Fort, they're very similar in that. You should only be building them if you like surrounded by warmongers, pretty much. Next, Sistine Chapel. A tier wonder. Plus 25% culture in all cities. Like, that's kind of crazy when you think about it. Uh, this is beneficial both for a uh, cultural victory and not. Because if it's a cultural victory, obviously this gives you a ton of culture. But if it's not, if you're not going for culture, this will deny an opponent a lot of culture. And usually the opponent that builds this is going to be the number one person going for a culture victory. So this can be beneficial in pretty much all games, whether you can want to get a cultural victory or deny people a cultural victory. It's kind of a, a double-edged sword there. Next up, the Statue of Liberty. I'm going to go into B tier. This one, you have to have the freedom ideology. And the extra production, you know, that's fine. It's fine and all, but by the time you get this, it's probably going to already have... Your cities are going to have a ton of production anyway. Uh, and of course, this is a free policy just like the Kremlin, but the production is a little more valuable than the... The well, production for every specialist is more valuable than the production just towards tanks. So that's why Statue of Liberty has to go above uh, the Kremlin. You know, they're pretty similar except with the, uh, the... The production over every specialist is better. Next, the Statue of Zeus is going to file into D tier for me. You have to have honor for this one. Plus 15% combat strength when attacking cities. Okay, it's not that bad. Uh, except there's a promotion that gets you pretty much the same thing on your melee units. And that's without having to build a wonder or adopting honor. 
which if you're going for a domination, you're probably getting honor anyway. But still, this is a wonder where you have a promotion that pretty much does the same thing. So that's why it's really not that valuable unless you have honor and you know you really want to destroy cities in the early game. Because it can't help in the early game before you get that promotion. Other than that, you should not be building this wonder unless you want to go for a domination. Next up we have Stonehenge. It's going to file into B tier. The faith that early into the game can really jumpstart your religion, get you all your missionaries a lot earlier, and the Great Engineer point will help you get Great Engineers faster, so if you're going for faith, you might as well get this wonder. You can build more wonders later with the Great Engineer point. It's a solid wonder overall. B tier. Sydney Opera House, another D tier wonder. Um, well, it's free, free policy, okay. That's fine, but the music stuff is okay. The cultural in the city, okay. But again, it's so late into the game that if you're on a cultural victory, you're probably already snowballing by the time this is happening. So that's why I have it go in the D tier. Again, this, the Louvre, Broadway, they're all very similar. Taj Mahal is a C tier wonder. The Instant Golden Age? Okay, not bad. That's not a bad uh, bonus, depending on whether, you know, you're having unha you're having happiness problems, so you need to get a Golden Age. Uh, you just want, you're in between Golden Ages, you want to get another one. You can never really say no to no more Golden Ages, except building a wonder just to get a Golden Age is not, you know, anything crazy or anything, so that's why I think it's a perfectly average wonder. Temple of Artemis is going to be another S tier wonder. It's not plus 10% growth, it's literally plus 10% food. And food is king in this game, because food gets you more population, it gets you more science, which gets you more everything, pretty much. So to get that bonus for food for that early into the game, already at archery, for the rest uh, of your game, and to get an engineer point to start that snowball, wow, Temple of Artemis might be overlooked a little bit, but it can be super strong. Especially because the AI does not usually build it. Then we have the Terracotta Army, which is going to be an F tier wonder. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, a copy it provides a copy of every unit that you or every type you have. So you know, if you have one catapult and three archers, you're only going to get one catapult and one archer. The problem is these units are not free, so it increases your maintenance. This is a wonder where it kind of hurts you at some at that point in the game because you don't have a lot of gold. And last but not least, we have Uffizi, which again, like all these cultural wonders, is going into D tier. Uh, just, it doesn't do enough. Uh, you have to have aesthetics. So if you're going for culture, that's the only reason you pick up aesthetics. And you know, you can fill it with art, you can put bonuses in there, okay, but the only reason you're getting that wonder is because you have a culture of victory. And that's the only reason you're opening aesthetics. That's why it has to be D tier wonder. I'd say it's probably worse than Broadway and the Louvre. It actually, it's the Louvre and actually the Louvre and Uffizi are pretty much similar because you have to open a policy tree to get them. Broadway is slightly better than them, but not enough to be up here. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this Civ Five Wonder tier list. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, agree, disagree. Uh, let me know what other kind of videos you want to see next. Whether it's more tier lists, more content, some gameplay commentary, anything you want, I'll be sure to listen and be looking in the comments. So I uh, appreciate you watching if you made it this far. Thank you and have a great day.